Brilliance Audio. The Patient's Secret by Loreth Ann White. Performed by Brittany Presley. She runs deeper into the forest, and fear rises in her belly. She should have searched properly for her phone before exiting her studio. She shouldn't have gone out at this hour. But she was forced into the night, into the teeth of the summer storm, by the voices that have begun in her head again. She's desperate to outrun them. On another level, she knows she will never flee them. Not now. The monster is not out there circling her. It's not someone else. It's inside her head. It is her. I stabbed, got blood on me, couldn't stab again, too young to die, pleading, not to kill, heard the gurgling. Once it started, it couldn't stop. It had to be finished. A silent scream swells in her chest. The sound comes alive. It pierces her ears. Tears sting her eyes. She pushes harder, faster, craving escape. Her breath rasps in her throat. Her chest heaves. Sweat dampens her t-shirt beneath her waterproof running jacket. An image slices through her brain. The gaping, leaf-shaped wounds. The gouge in the eye socket. Blood. So much blood. Splattered and spattered and sprayed over the walls, across the ceiling on the lampshades, the television screen, the exercise bike. The hallway carpet saturated and sticky with it. She can smell it again. Hot. Meaty. I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. I was another person. I don't even recognize that person. It's like it wasn't real. It wasn't me. She sees the glint of the blade. She hears screams. She moves her legs even faster. I killed. I killed. I killed. I didn't want to. Lightning cracks above the canopy, and thunder booms. She stumbles in fright, almost going down. Shaken, she stops, bends over, and places her hands on her hips. She sucks in big gulps of air. Her heart slams against her ribcage. Her exhalations explode in ghostly puffs in the beam of her headlamp. Thunder grumbles again and rolls out over the ocean. She can't see the sea, but she can sense it. A surging, empty blackness below the cliffs through the trees to her right. And now that she is still, beneath the drumming noise of the rain, she can hear waves churning and clattering the pebbles at the base of the crumbling sandstone cliffs. Things have gone so wrong. She had a plan, but it flipped on her. She doesn't know what to do now, or how to even be, or what her purpose is. Something moves among the trees. She tenses, flicks her gaze toward the shapes in the forest to her right. As she moves, her beam shivers in the mist, and shadows dart and lunge. She swallows, peering hard into the darkness between the trunks and ferns. Lightning flickers again. The thunder crash is almost instant. The storm is directly overhead. Rain pummels down harder, and the wind swishes through the treetops with the sound of a rushing river. In her peripheral vision, she glimpses a hooded figure in the trees. Then he's gone. Her pulse quickens, her mouth goes dry. Panic licks in her belly. She needs to get out of these woods. She glances back along the trail. It would take longer to return than to continue forward. If she presses onward, within minutes she will pop out into an open expanse on the grassy bluffs. She begins to run again. Lightning flares. She moves faster, stumbling over roots, sliding in mud. Pine cones, small branches tear loose from the trees, and the debris bombs down. A flying cone narrowly misses her head. She ducks. 
her abrupt movement makes shadows leap and scurry. She stops again. Panting, she spins around and sees the hooded figure once more, lurking between the trees. His face is in blackness, as though masked. Fog thickens, and he's gone. A claw of fear grabs her throat. Fear grabs 